gentlemen and disappointments. We are coming to you live from the Woman Caves in New York and Connecticut. My name is Leslie. And my name is Melissa. And we are Verbally Disastrous. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Leslie Jasper, of the Verbally Disastrous podcast that can be found on over 20 podcast platforms, including YouTube. For this episode, I decided to bring my really good friend who has been an electrician 40 years, retired for 10. His name is Donnie Rafa. He volunteered to sit with me over the phone and talk about his career as a high voltage electrical splicer in New York, of course. So we have known each other since pretty much I topped out and became a journeywoman around 2001 is how long I've known him. Actually, it might might have been more in the 90s too. I'm just going to say it's at least a 20, over 20 year friendship. So he's working in the garage, working on grapes, taking the stems and the leaves off of them because this is the season where he gets his harvest of grapes. I guess he said he had 50 pounds of grapes that he is processing and getting them ready so that they can ferment over the next year and then they will belong to the batch of wine for next year so he does a perpetual process he enjoys it and it gives him something to do so because of that i was finally able to nail him where he's sitting still because he likes to keep himself busy so i was able to get him to sit down and discuss with me about his lifetime career as a splicer because the majority of his career he was a high voltage splicer so i'm introducing donnie in the garage now he's sitting in these wooden chairs that have some history to them he said they give character to the story so therefore i'm gonna leave it in if people have an issue with that i'll have him come back on we'll schedule another time and then he can share some more stories because i'm sure there's 40 years of stories there's plenty more than what he shared in these episodes so now i have part a this is the first half of the discussion where i bring him in while he's busy working in his garage so let's check it out now i'm introducing my longtime pal for what 20 20 years 25 20 years his name's donnie he's a retired high voltage splicer slash electrician which one do you identify with more being an electrician or more so the specialty is the high voltage splicing i sucked as an electrician you said, what'd you say? I said I sucked as an electrician. I both just place it. It's much better. Is there a reason for... You, I enjoyed it more. You enjoyed it more, so then it was more rewarding, whereas it sounds like you don't like doing other pieces of the electrical. A lot of people don't realize being an interior wireman is anything from low voltage to high voltage. I don't think I ever did switch in a plug. No, you never did? I don't think so. And if I did, uh, years ago, like, I don't know, I retired now 10 years. You've been so, retired 10 years now. Oh, it'll be 10 years in well, February. Wow. And he's enjoying uh, a local three pension and uh, making the besties over here, uh, probably multitasking while he's talking to me. Uh, Taking the stems off grapes, right? For that process? Right now, I'm uh, getting 20 cases of grapes ready for wine. I got to see the last badge. (laughs) Now, uh, at what age and year did you join the union and become an apprentice? 1979. See, I was 21. And how long was your apprenticeship? Because, Because mine was, in the late 90s, it was five and a half years. Four years. Okay. Now, why did you join the Electrician's Union? What prompted you to do that? Don't you come from a family of plumbers? Plumbers. My father was a plumber. My uncle was a plumber. I took the plumber's test. And I got into the plumbers. But I also applied for college. And I went to college instead. And they says, 
I can still become a plumber anytime I want. So when I got out, I tried. I wanted to weld because I went to welding school in Texas. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I wanted to weld. I wanted to go to the fitter. I took the fitter test. I took the plumbing test. No, I'm sorry. I took the fitter test. I took the electrical test. Fitters messed up on their tests, which is all the same test anyway. Right? They messed up or you messed up? Oh, they messed up. <laughs> How did they mess up? You're saying as far as releasing the test? What's that? They didn't give me all the, all the parts for the test. They didn't give you, when they were proctoring the exam, they didn't give out all the components of the required exam? Yeah, they forgot. So uh, my father says, well, I can get you an electrician. I said, okay, we'll do that. And your father, by the way, rest in peace. He was an awesome man. I always appreciated him oh, yeah. when... I would see him, and he used to call, he used to call me his idol, which I always thought that was funny because I was thinking you're way cooler than me. But go ahead now. Your your father and your brother are plumbers. My father and my brother are plumbers. Yeah, yeah. Did he end up uh, becoming a contractor? My brother or my father. Either one. No, my father actually was a uh, was a delegate. Well, not a delegate, but he did the minutes. What do you call that? Is it a treasurer? Somebody's in charge of the finances. He was also a treasurer, but he did the... Well, he might have been a shop steward, like you're saying, the meeting minutes, the union meeting minutes. Always a, a superintendent. Superintendent, okay. So yep. he was manpower. Manpower, yeah. And did he transition from being with the tools after, say, 10 yeah. years and then become supervision? Yeah, he was also in Korea as a plumber. Really? Oh, that's yeah. so he started out in the military. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So was so he, he in the CBs? He, he was in the plumbers before he went into the Army. Oh, he went in the then Army. He, okay. Then he got called into to the Army. He was doing the uh, hospital okay. in Korea. And actually, they're still there. I, heard. The I hear a chair in the background. I don't know if that's yeah. going to... That's because I... Pounds, <laughs> of all all muscle. <laughs> my, my ass makes noise like that, and I got no ass. <laughs> That's why the pants are always falling around. Johnny's got the same problem. It's like his, I always want him to wear a belt, and then he's just like, "Nah, I'm good." The minute he bends over, plumbers crack. I get put uh, suspenders on my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Don Don. <laughs> At what point in your career did you decide to get into high voltage splicing? Well, when I was a fourth year apprentice, I was a pimp for a couple splicers over at IBM in Yorktown. You said a pimp? I was a pimp, yeah. A pimp is... A Splicer's Helper. Oh, no way. I didn't know that. Yeah, you were my pimp. Oh, yes. I was your pimp for quite a while. <laughs> quite a while. Where does that term come from? I don't know. I don't know. Can I make it up? No, probably not. <laughs> so maybe I did. I did a pimp and everybody had to sign it. Now, this was back before the, the hip-hop world came around and you had the pimps. But no, pimp is probably when you're referencing... The street yeah, life. Like uh, someone that helps me uh, do what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Is he wearing a fur coat? <laughs> Driving a Cadillac? <laughs> Just to top that. Just to top. <laughs> drop, drop top. It was in, uh, 1984. I was doing it. We were doing work at IBM Yorktown. And they were doing a lot of lead work. And I, it, lead work always. I always liked lead work. My father, I learned pouring lead with my father as a plumber. Okay. Right. So it came easy to me. So I, I mentioned to the guys to listen. If they have a class, I'm taking. It. Yep. So they had a class as soon as I topped out in 1984. That's a so lucky went, thing. L lucky break. Now, that's good. And then I, another three years. So the, yeah. the the high voltage class was theory and application, right? All together was four years. How long was the theory? And hands on in school was three years. 
hands-on is three years, and the theory where you're sitting in the class is one year of the four years. I mean, you're sitting in the class with uh, hands-on, but you're, you're building spices, right? Okay, so it's more practicing in the classroom, and then once you get into the last three years, it's on-the-job training. Well, no. We were spicing in the, in the classroom for three years. Okay, so it was all within the classroom. At what point did you go out to the field? Probably the last year of school. How did your first time go? Once it was game time and you had to go into the manhole for your first time. I felt so confident it was unbelievable. Really? I Every time I went to the main hall, I felt confident. Not confident. Confident. <laughs> Conf confident, not competent. Yeah. So you're saying that being confident got over any kind of fear? And no fear. No fear, which is important when you're potentially, what kind of voltage, let the audience know, what kind of voltage is in the pit? Anywhere between 5,000 and 35,000. 35,000 volts. Get it for the people who don't know what that is. Yeah, there's 35,000. How do you graduate? What's your means of graduating? A school? Yeah. Make sure you, all your joints didn't blow up and the teachers were happy with what you did, what you learned. Explain what a joint is for a person who has no idea what that means. And it's not something you smoke. Well, hopefully, you don't want it to smoke. <laughs> no, a joint. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's spicy. Okay, it's a connection for the average person. It's a connection between the t two wires joining them together. Right. It could be either be soldered, high pressed. There's different ways of doing this. Now, lead lead is an old way of doing it, or is it a new way? way of the old cable used to be lead. The outside jacket used to be lead. Ah, now, okay. You are. Now it's a rubber. The insulation's rubber. Uh, used to be oil paper. Now it's EPR or uh, a rubber insulation. They don't do what they used to do years ago. Uh, there was joints called, there was connectors or splices called potheads, and they were also lead, which was, for some, it, it could be hard, you know, but for me, it became easy. Now, would you, you know? say that going away from the lead splicing. Which one do you think is better mechanically? I, I think the lead is. But the problem with it is it costs more? It costs more and you have to train the people, right? There's other stuff now that they're, they're not even training people. Oh. They're just like the, the contractors are, are just going out there and, oh, okay, I'll, I'll send this guy out. With the instructions, if you can do it, fine. You know? Which is not a good thing because if they blow up. It, it could be a time bomb in there even if it didn't go off immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's your funniest high voltage splicing story? <laughs> <laughs> if you have a couple of them, you can share them, of course. Well, there was one guy I was working with, and I forget the name, and I'm glad I did because maybe I shouldn't say their name. <laughs> Who's that? I was on one job, was just community college, and it was a beautiful night, and uh, I was talking to the guy on top of the mantle, I was in the mantle, about 15 feet down, and all of a sudden I stopped talking to him because I was concentrating on what I was doing, my neck started getting wet. I said, why my neck look? I, I looked up, the guy sound asleep, <laughs> drooling all over my neck. No, he's outside the manhole, like he leaned into the hole with his face exposed to where he's dripping on your neck. Oh, I'm dripping on my neck. My neck is soaking wet. <laughs> was what, is it safe to say that this unidentified person was uh, not the best type of worker, or was he just tired? I played at night, and I probably would have done the same thing, but I would spit on the guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you would go somewhere and uh, lay low, say in the back of the van. Oh. Right? I, I tie a string around his leg and told him to lean against the van. <laughs> I beat him up. I tug on his leg. <laughs> so you'd use the string of call help? Did that work? Did you have to do that? Yeah, yeah I did it. <laughs> I knew I was going to be down there for a couple more hours. So. Wow.
Now, the longest uh, splicing job that you've ever had to do, where you had to stay on the job, you couldn't leave and go home to go rest, was how long? 60 hours. 60 hours? Nice. IBM. IBM, Yorktown? They never wanted me to leave. They always wanted me to stay there to continue doing what I'm doing. And I did. And the longest time, yeah, the longest time was 60 hours. Well, I remember uh, when we were working nights, was it at Avon where we did the shut? Yeah, we did the shutdowns. We were x-raying the equipment and tightening uh, neutrals. Yep. That shutdown was how long? It wasn't that long. Overnight, right? Yeah, but then we did some other shutdowns. I could have sworn they were at Avon. You know, were you at uh, the She Rock plant, or you were gone by then? Uh, worked a lot of time there. I didn't. I remember us doing some shutdowns. I know we did that shutdown on Central Avenue, that strip mall that Paulie and I were at, where he was grinding in the back of. The panel, and it was near some feeders. I'm like, if you fuck this up, I'm going to get blasted. He goes, well, that's why I know you're going to pay attention. <laughs> Is that, uh... It was like Hartsdale or whatever. Was it near Trader Joe's? I'm trying to remember. For anybody who's New York, they would get the reference. Anybody else would be like, what the hell are these people talking yeah. about? On Central Avenue. Yeah, it was on Central. I remember us doing uh, sh- uh, shots of <laughs> espresso at night. Well, we gotta wait till we uh, get this wire pulled in and everything ter- uh, terminated and everything back on. Now, what would be your three lessons lessons learned on your high voltage splicing journey? You have to be on top of your game, right? Okay. You hurt all the time because anything can happen. There's thirteen thousand volts. It's not like it's a light switch where you can just. Hit the breaker and go back on. Which would be for the person who doesn't know versus 120 or 277 volts. Uh, 13,000 will kill you. Yes. Quick. It has. Have you ever seen anybody survive 13,000 volts? Uh, I've seen a kid. Yeah. (laughs) That's another funny story. Okay. But that's not really funny because the kid was a jerk. Right? Yep. Comes in the job, and I won't say where it was. It doesn't matter. Westchester Community College. <laughs> <laughs> he, he works at Westchester Community College, right? Okay. So I got a call saying, he, uh, listen, we had an outage over here. You got to come fix it. I said, okay. So I go and check it out. And I'm looking for the outage. I'm looking for where the damaged cable was. We couldn't find it, so we got advanced testing. We were thumping it. That's when you test the cable, and it thumps, and it tells you where the problem is. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we couldn't find it. So all of a sudden, the phone, their phone calls me, and they say, did the kid call you? I says, no. He says, uh, well, he's supposed to call you. I says, well, I'll give him my number again. Maybe he's getting my wrong number. So he calls me up. He says, Don, he says, uh, Man I said, what man hole would that be, babe? He says, the man hole over by whatever building it was, I don't remember. I said, okay, what about it? He says, well, you told me he was dead. I said, no, I would never tell you. I would never tell you anything, bro. Right? No, you gotta test, test it yourself. Always test it yourself. And there's no way in hell I would tell you he was dead. Yep. I says, so what'd you do? He says, I cut it. You cut it? <gasps> what? A pair of lockers. You cut 13,000 volts for a pair of lockers. He says, yeah. I says, did you change your underwear yet? He says, yeah. Matter of fact, I did. This is what I go play the lottery. Because you're a lucky bastard. Nothing happened to the loppers? We all the loppers got burned. Okay. Well, I heard about people blowing their arm off and stuff like that. That's another, that's another story. Yeah, so he didn't get hurt, but... It rattled him. He did give me work. <laughs> <laughs> gave you work. He gave you more work. It did he change to me. Huh? Yep. Chaos equals cash. Yep. Chaos equals cash. Wow. Yeah. Did he get fired? No, he didn't get fired. They, they hushed it up because he came in on a Saturday, pulled the wire out to go to the junkie. 
Okay, so that's what they were trying to sneak in there before you came in for the splice and yank the wire because they were going to scrap it. They were going to scrap it, yeah. yeah. Ah, of course, and he's going to say that you told them it was dead, which is bullshit. I don't tell nobody not to. Hell no. I wouldn't even tell you, you know, 110's dead unless you check these out. No, I made sure Tom, it, since he's an apprentice, I got him a lockout tag out kit, and I told him you always keep that with you. And okay. always check. Don't ever have anybody, yeah, yeah, because that's your life, not theirs. There's no reason to do a lot. There's no reason at all. Hell no. 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 So now, would you call that the worst yeah. splicing story? That was, that was actually sad because someone did something stupid like that and they could have killed themselves. Yes. Agreed. Is that up there with the worst story in the world? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. There was another bad one where uh, I was living in right back. I just drove up the driveway. I got a call from Advanced Testing. He says there was a, a blow up down in uh, SUNY Purchase. And I just drove home an hour and a half. Sometimes we need to go soon. They're, they're closed. And they, they don't have any power. All right. So I go down there. And I found out that the guy took a, a tester, the Wiggins. Yep. And he, he knew he had problems on the secondaries. So he checked it on the secondaries. Then he went to the primaries, and he put the Wiggins on the primary. Oh. Wiggins are not made for primaries. No. They're only right. rated, for the average person who's listening, a Wiggins tester that he's talking about only goes up to 600 volts. Right. And the guy's trying to test that on, what, 13,000? Yep. So he had his, uh, apparently he had his, sorry, I just dropped some grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat them? Five second rule? Okay. I'm doing six, six gallons at a time. <laughs> six or sixty? Six. I'm halfway through my forty-two pound box. How how many hours did that take you? Oh, it's gonna take me another two days. Oh, you've been doing it for two days now? Just picked them up a little while ago. I was oh. Doing oh. This couple night and then I'm gonna pull the quiz and then come back. Yeah. Have coffee and then come back out tomorrow. Morning. Gotcha. You get up early and tend to the garden first? Yeah, the garden's almost finished. Very nice. Oh. Is harvest season for the ginormous squash? Did you see those squash? 36 pounds. Do they weigh 30, 36 pounds? Because yeah. I put it as a YouTube short on my Verbally Disastrous YouTube channel. Of course, I was making fun of the squash, so Tom listened to my short, and he was like, oh my god, you're you're a rip. I, I think I pulled 150 pounds squash out of that plant. 150 pounds. So you get a can everything, right? Well, I give it away because I don't know. A squash, you really can't can, I don't think. No? I, freeze I think you can freeze it. I'll have to jump uh, on the train to go get some. I got one sitting here right now. It's 30 pounds. Wow. Uh, did I tell you that uh, Johnny's football team, the Carmel Rams, have been kicking ass and taking names this season? What do you eat nothing to yeah, actually, last Saturday against John Jay, which is up in Fishkill, they won 40-7. to seven. In the beginning, John Jay, you know, everybody was there talking shit. And then <laughs> towards the end, you see people staggering out, like, all depressed about how they got a beating. The week before, they were up, it was a home game. New Rochelle came up. New Rochelle was state champs. They were all nervous about them. 28-0. They didn't even let them score. I'm... Happy for him. I'm very happy for him that he's a part of a winning situation. So it's good for a young man's self-esteem. There's a ton of kids on the team. Yeah. So he's... Uh, yeah. It, he's a senior, right? No, no. He's a junior. He has a senior play more because this way... Yes, because it's their last season. So he, he plays more towards the end, so to speak, when the kids are tired. Obviously, when they're on defense. But I'm I'm happy for him that he's experiencing something like that. It's I think it's awesome to see them all ki like kicking ass on that level. And if they go to state, I definitely want to be in on yeah. that. Yeah, that would be cool to to see that have that kind of bragging rights. Yeah. They don't wear letter. You know how they used to have Letterman jackets, and you'd have your high school letter. I haven't seen anybody wearing one. That's six hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, but I've n- I don't even recall even seeing a kid wearing one to say, hey, let me go get you a, a jacket. Yeah, oh, really? I'll, I have to find out about it because if he gets a letter for football, then yeah. that would be cool to, to get him to wear it as a keepsake. Yeah. I just found my letter from White Plains. Did you? It was for wrestling? Oh, you played football. Yeah. I was going to ask you what type of electrical work you enjoy doing, but we've already established you like splicing and you sucked as an electrician. So you never did any low voltage? I remember that time when uh, you were up on the ladder trying to do a smokehead for, what was yeah. it, Nick. You were like, Leslie, can you help me? My hands are too big. <laughs> So you would say fire alarm you hate and no, fire alarm. I, I'll fight the fight, but I will pull wire. No, like, you don't want to do terminations. <laughs> I did a, a short story on yeah. Amazon about our buddy Lucky, who was our apprentice. You remember that fellow, right? Supposedly he's still in the business. Nine fingers because <laughs> you said you have nine fingers because of that bastard. I know. You want to tell the story about that? Sure. <laughs> that couldn't see, couldn't hear, and couldn't walk. He gave it, gave it to me as an, you know, to help me do some uh, terminations in, a, in the cabinet. And I had this, well, I'm going to call it a high press. That's where you put the cables together. You press the connectors together. It was a big hydraulic. And I told Lucky, have you ever operated one of these before? Of course, I had to really explain it to him. He said, no, I didn't. I said, when I say okay... <laughs> Hit that button. So he thought I said okay. And he hit the button and he almost took my finger. I took the button away from him and I told him to go in the corner and sit in the corner. <laughs> I wouldn't let him work with you. I said, I wouldn't go up with 10 fingers that night. You remember our, our fearless leader, I had to work with him in Mount Vernon, and we were piping out uh, with the black con ed pipe up to the manhole. Remember we had those, what I would describe, uh, if you're in elementary school, when you're putting on those little rubber things on your pencil to, to keep you from getting calluses on your finger? The coupling was like a rubber, rubberized, like clear green, and you had yep. to lube it up with Dawn soap. Yep. Squirt it all in, <laughs> squirt it all in there, and then bang it on with a sledgehammer. But it was like a whole technique with it. So here I'm messing with it, and I'm trying to get the kid to to do it. He smacked his ankle, and he did it a couple times because one leg was shorter than the other, as you so eloquently yeah. describe. And he couldn't hear. He had one eye. One eye, yeah. Yeah, it screws up your depth perception. <laughs> I asked him, well, what made you decide to do this? Oh, because the insurance. So I said, what good is that if you cause yourself or somebody else to, to be killed? What good is that? It's like you're not even built for this business at all whatsoever. He had a compensation case with every contract he worked for. Yeah, because by the time he was working with us, he, he was a fourth-year apprentice, and he had four compensation cases, which I didn't think was possible because you open one, and you can't open up another one for three years. I think it's three. It's like a three-year time frame. So he must have had four accident reports and maybe a compensation case covering shit. At least one. You get 26 weeks for each compensation uh, ticket, so to speak, and it's like every three years. So what was the guy up on, like, his second comp case? Didn't he fall? He was on somebody's job, and he fell off the ladder and broke his shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was something else. I felt like you couldn't have him do anything. He was up there one step off the ladder. One step, not six feet, not ten feet, one foot. One step on the ladder, he fell He fell off and broke oh, his shoulder. Well, you want to call back later? Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, yeah, one absolutely. One. This wraps up part A on the discussion with my longtime pal Donnie about his high voltage splicing career in New York. Now, if you enjoyed the content, go back in to the podcast platform of your choice and look for part B. Thank you. I wish you a great day. Peace out, Cub Scout. This wraps up another episode on the Verbally Disastrous Podcast that can be found on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. For more information, head over to www.constructiontales.com. Thank you for listening and have a great one.